What's up out there, YouTube? <laughs> hey, what's up, guys? This is the right here at Retro Crypto. I got Dion Rogers there. Can you hear me, Dion? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. All right, perfect. All right, I got Dion Rogers here. We want to do some. We're going to do a dive into a little bit of everything, actually, because it felt damn good today to wake up and to see charts that look like this. That was, like, absolutely amazing. What do you think, Dion? It's pretty cool this yeah, morning. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty good. Nice change for once. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, are you sold on Zen yet? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm getting, I'm getting there. Still haven't bought any, but I'm just kind of sitting back and uh, speculating. You, oh, you, oh, speculate. Hey, that, that's crypto, man. Crypto. See, that's one thing I've been hearing lately. And actually, when people say that, I hate when they say cryptocurrency is speculating because um, it used to be 2017. It definitely was. The whole market moved in tandem with Bitcoin, but now. But I will agree, though, Zen is speculating because your first question is, what does it do, right? There we go. Let's jump over here to Zen. Yeah, I think I was uh, waiting for the whole Zen NFT, uh, NFT thing to roll out, and uh, that rolled out, and then seeing what happened with that. So I was just kind of trying to figure everything out, trying to analyze too much. <laughs> gotcha. Well, one thing that was amazing that I saw today was, uh, let's see, it's over here. One thing that I thought was pretty amazing today was right down here when I woke up this morning, I saw that the burn was up at uh, 8.07%. Um, that would be with the total supply. Yeah. This is what the yield said. The burn was at 7.98%. Uh, but I believe yesterday it was like 76 So it was pretty nice to see it move in the right direction. Now, I will say that when uh, Trayvon James did the initial interview, well, it wasn't really initial. It was a couple weeks back, I guess. Uh, with Jack Levin, he actually, Jack Levin was hoping for like a 30% burn. So it's only an 8% thus far, but I'm not too concerned. I think it'll be just fine. Have you been watching it at all? Yeah, yeah I've been uh, watching the chart on it a little bit. Okay. Yeah, I actually picked up some Zen FTs. I don't know. I think I, pulled, I brought like eight, like 10 of them roughly, but um, it's pretty user friendly, honestly. I like it. And it's kind of, it's better than using a coin tool. Because coin tool, it is that fear of what if the, if that site goes down. But uh, yeah. Mac Levin just did a video with Trayvon, I think yesterday or the day before. I think it was yesterday, and he was mentioning that um, they will be building a UI into the website so that to eliminate that fear of you trying to figure out how to do the contract yourself. Did you catch that on that video? No, no, I think I missed that one. I watched a little bit of it and then uh, had some stuff come up. I can't believe you're not sold on Zen yet. What's scaring you about Zen? You got to tell me. Uh, there's not not really too much scaring me on anything just yet. Uh, I feel like I've messed around with like riskier stuff. Yeah, it's just I'm uh, trying to understand. I, I want to like completely like understand it so I like have a game plan when I come in. All right. So, so what what is your understanding of Zen right now of how it works? Uh, not not really much to be honest. Um, I couldn't I couldn't really tell you like exactly uh what the project completely is about at the moment. Yeah, that's probably another reason I'm just trying to completely understand it. Yeah, I've, I've went to the website and read it over a few times, but haven't really gone through everything just yet. Okay. Well, my my interpretation of it from Jack Levin is he just wanted to come up with a project that somewhat mirrored Bitcoin the way it was originally released, where something being released for other people, basically like you could mine Bitcoin for free. You know what I mean? And just to give people a on wrap into cryptocurrency that they could do for free. That was how he initially presented it. Well, still presented it. Um, yeah, yeah, that's what got me confused a little bit on it, because like with uh, Bitcoin, the original uh, reason for Bitcoin to come out for wasn't uh, for people to actually like make money off of it and stuff like that, to actually be used. And then once people started uh, not actually using it and actually start holding it and trying to get rich off of it, that's when uh, every, everything started changing up. So like I'm trying to figure out, is it like Zen going to be like the type of thing where like we're just supposed to be like spending it and actually using yes, it? Yes, I'm glad you said that because you segued into something that I really wanted to discuss on this video because my approach was wrong but before i say that hey guys do me a favor hit that like button 
all five of you <laughs> and i appreciate each and every one of you for joining me here uh zen ting you too thank you for joining me on this video make sure you guys all hit the like and please hit that comment we got a ton of things we want to talk about today but um anyway so with zen my approach was wrong and i wanted to do this video to make sure everybody knew that my approach was wrong to zen my approach was to mint it and then to hodl it and then i would continue to create more mints like so a mint would end i would hodl whatever zen i received and then I'll just create a new mint. That is not the vision for Zen. You shouldn't be hodling Zen. So I was approaching it wrong. And that's out of uh, Jack Levin's mouth when he was talking to Trayvon James yesterday. And that, so I want to make sure everybody in the world knew, whoa, 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 I was wrong. You want, Zen is not meant for you to hodl because it's so easy to recreate. So you're, he wants you to go out and spend it and get, it'll create value for itself. But and then you just mint some more because it's free just as long as the gas fees are down and yeah but yeah that does answer your question do not hodl it my attitude towards it right now is i mint it i claim it and then i mint some more with the profits i gained and i just keep rolling it right back into it but and i could spend it if i want but i'm just going to keep rolling it right back into it does that make sense to you at all yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, I like to look at the uh, NFTs, though. Is there going to be any more, like, usage for them? Uh, more usage. Be coming behind you know it? what? On the video that I did with him, he did delve into that. Because he was... Well, you know, like, you can um sell the NFT. So, you can actually... So, say... Uh, we'll just use one of these. for. Well, you know what? Most people have the Ruby. So, let's just do a Ruby. Keep it real. So, we'll go to a Ruby. I got a bunch of Rubies. And we'll load arrow down a little bit. Something somewhat realistic. Yeah, I was looking into the uh, unicorn thing. Wow, these are really. I think people are actually buying these up. Honestly, <laughs> I want to look at it a little bit more. All right, we're going to do this one for example. So this one's a hundred and it's uh point point one zero ETH, which is equivalent of one hundred and twenty six U S one hundred and twenty five U S dollars. The estimated earning would be nine hundred and almost almost ten X basically of a return and then you can see that right down here it expresses what the, the estimated zen return should be in monetary value so if you're buying this for 125 days and you wait well you're forced to wait 440 days unless you choose to sell it um it your your net 1374 dollars does that make sense to you yeah yeah that makes that makes a little bit more sense yeah so like what I've been doing, what I was doing last night specifically is I would just go in here and I would just pick, like I've, I've been doing me, I would, I would just click on the collectors, honestly. I would just go to collectors. So these are the cheaper ones. Uh, limited, uh, Apex is for the big high rollers. Um, I don't have any limited. Uh, I kind of took a hitting with the market um, <laughs> in the collectors. Um, so I would just run a search there and then we'll change the price direction. Ooh, not that direction. All right, so like right here. But then you gotta you gotta be careful because somebody has sent me a message on Twitter and he, he wasn't quite sure what direction to go with. And honestly, Zen between Zen Turbo and OpenSea, they make it as easy as possible for you to, uh, before you make a decision. So I'm gonna pick something that's actually profitable, realistically. All right, we'll keep it like for you. Like you want to get your feet wet, right? So I'm gonna click this here. We're gonna open up Open C very quickly. Shouldn't have. Really? Is there is there a Zen unicorn? I, I feel like I, I don't I don't know. If there's. A, <laughs> I was oh, just thinking about that. If, if there if there is a Zen unicorn, what do you mean? Uh, NFT? Yeah, yeah. I remember somebody's telling me something about a uh, unicorn something, and I uh, one of the comments on like one of my tweets on Twitter. I, oh, uh, well, the Zen unicorn. It's just like a Star Set collector. Yeah, well, a Star Set collector. And then what is it? Apex, or hold on, I'll just go do this. Hold on, here we go. So it starts at collector, uh, limited Apex. So the Apex is where the unicorn is. Oh, okay, okay, I got you. But these are like, I mean, you got to, yeah. Here, I'll show you this real quick. I mean, in order to get a unicorn, I mean, you're talking, uh, let's see. A couple thousand or? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, they're they're a lot, man. <laughs> Or, or, or it should be allowed to see there's like there's not too many people because between burning the zen that you already like i think you have to burn 10 billion zen i believe 
I'm not mistaken. Somebody can probably correct me on that. Uh, let me get a price in here. Let's go to buy real quick. Let's go. I didn't even bother looking at these because they're so expensive, to be honest. The uh, the unicorn. That is definitely not the right, right price for the unicorn. <laughs> Is that like a scam or something? Or? No, it's not a scam. It's just not the right one. I, honestly, oh, okay. I haven't even looked at the unicorns because they were like so funny. Oh, yeah, it's coming straight from the site. Okay. Yeah, I just, I haven't even messed with it. I'm going to stick with what I know. I ain't going to talk out of my butt on it. Um, yeah, I always try to be careful. I'm hoping to see. Yeah, so collector. Yeah, I ended up bidding against myself the other day. It's so stupid. Just, I was so <laughs> mad. And I was like, how did it let me do it? But a damn site did let me, because I had it, favored it. It somehow it came up and I went to go buy it and it let me try to buy it for myself anyway. I was pretty annoyed, but um, we'll stick with these because I know I've dealt with these. I, I, the unicorns, I didn't even that's way out of my league. Um, wasn't doing the bull market, but I kind of screwed that up. But anyway, <laughs> the uh, let's see. So we're gonna use this one for example. Uh, this one's for nine ninety two. Uh, it's for point zero zero seven on ETH, so it's nine ninety two US dollars uh it's for 369 days it's 367 it's well you get that's the amount of days i've been used up so far three two and a half three days um estimated zen right there and then this right here will be the estimated profit for it so you're buying something for not nine dollars 92 cents plus the fee on uh open and then it's profit you just gotta wait roughly a year and yeah it's real cut and dry because you're just minting them okay and for people like you you don't even have to have a zen nft you could just do the transaction fee on your wallet so dion please inquiring minds want to know why haven't you done it yet uh i don't know just lazy just lazy and there's so much other stuff going on in the market and just Trying to keep up with the bags that I got for right now, and if I add anything extra, just like one more chart, one more uh, community, I got to keep up with. It is overwhelming. I've been getting overwhelmed lately. I like I want to learn so much. I want to learn all I can, and like I'm absolutely, I absolutely love Cardano to death. But when I so went to dive in the other day, it was so deep, and then my conclusion, I I came from the conclusion to the conclusion that I'm just gonna focus on the layer one part of the blockchain right now and the projects the cream will rise to the top and it's just too many right now to try to pick from in my opinion but i mean zen i mean this is a bottom floor opportunity so i understand the reluctancy but it's bottom floor yeah i'll probably come and come through and make an entry in here soon probably after this video to be honest yeah because also now there was a um a bonus i forgot how that worked they were just talking about that too i forgot is, a, is jack the only one behind uh zen the only developer or is there uh, other people working on it with him as other i'm sure there's other well he actually referred to the code as like super easy like super easy so uh, easy for him is probably like yeah <laughs> <laughs> so i think he kind of this but now i know zen turbo is separate i asked mm -hmm. him when i did the um the um stream with um zen turbo from crypto so he said because i asked him were they separate a separate entity he did he said they were a separate entity but they are in communication with each other with with each other but um i don't know how many devs he's never he never really got into it okay yeah and i was like checking out the website and um everything he's got set up so far with like the nfts and stuff i was like well if it is a one-man job he's doing pretty good pushing it out as early as the project is yeah, and unlike Hex, when he did date or time frame audit, you know, I mean, things might get pushed out two weeks. But I was doing a math last night, and I got so mad at Richard Hart. It frustrates me because it's not that I have I don't believe him. It just frustrates the heck out of me with Paul's chain because it was late April when he said two more weeks. And I start counting down the months, and it's been like nine months since it was supposed to be released and yeah. coming up on yeah, i told a couple of my buddies that it was coming out soon when he had made the two weeks comment and they were like yo where is it at a few months later i was like man i'm not even keeping up with it no more 
If it comes out, I'll use it. I'll mess around with it when it comes out. Yeah. Now, but yeah, Paul. I mean, I'll be happy, but because like I, there was something released actually today that was kind of cool. For, oh, I it 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 just said he has other people on his team. I never even thought about asking that because he always referred to the the, the actual uh, contract as being so simple that he he doesn't even act like it's like that big of a deal. Um, but I I ran across this today. Uh, I forgot who did a uh, stream on it. But like now there's Pulse Domain, so Pulse Chain Name Service, which is like a DNS, you know, for websites and the ENS. Like Ethereum has that, Cardano has it. It's, it's Metallicus has it. Everybody has it at this point. And it's just frustrating that, I mean, Pulse Chain does have a lot of things built out for it, literally, just waiting to hit the switch when Pulse Chain hits the switch. And Richard Hart keeps talking like about the devs are building it. And I don't understand the devs are copying ethereum 2.0 yeah and they're tweaking it a little bit but they're not writing it from scratch it's just weird to me what do you think yeah yeah that thing's a little bit weird um yeah i don't really even think too much about a hex and post i mean I, I thought about it a little bit earlier today i think i was watching bitboy or something like that and uh, he had mentioned it and um something got bought up about the uh, sec i'm not even sure if it was on bitboy it was on somebody's channel and something got bought up about the uh, sec with somebody else coming out mm -hmm. and um saying something but i haven't really been keeping up too much with it but um definitely um, the longer it's taken the more and more i'm kind of distancing away from it especially with uh all the uh, sec buzz i'm not really too sure what exactly what's going on with that so i don't want to talk too much on it but uh if it takes any much longer then um it may just be something that's too hard for us to get a hold of in the U.S. at that point. Wait, you mean what, Pulse Chain? Yeah, it might be a whole other XRP situation with a uh, X. Why? Um, uh, I don't know. I'm just hearing um, SEC stuff going around, and just too many rumors to go around to keep up with to tell like what's actually going on. I actually gotta go to the website and try to dig around myself. And... Uh, come on, inquiring minds, want to know? What do you know? <laughs> Oh, for the people in the, in here, please hit that like button. Every like I get will send more traffic. Come on, Dion. We, we want we want to know what you know. Speak up. All right. I don't I don't know too much. I just know that uh, Richard he's not in the U.S. So um, anything involved in that's not really going to bother him too much. But the people in the U.S. that um, may be messing around with a few things that we may not know about, and who knows? But... Yeah. I don't know. I kind of I have faith. I'm honestly, BitBoy, believe it or not, has re made me, caused me to retain my faith in Richard Hart because he really put himself out there when he let him open his show up and stuff. He does that. He's never, I haven't seen let anybody do that. And that's really putting your name on the line. I mean, can you imagine if Sam Bankman Freed had been on his show and he let him open up the show? Oh, yeah, that's man. A big statement, you know? But, um, yeah. I mean, he was talking about uh, FTT going up. But I, I guess that's totally different. I've talked about quite a few tokens going up, and then it's not really not really my fault, not really his fault that it blew up. People that are running the token. Yeah. Now nah, that was all greed and stupidity. I say greed and stupidity. He just kept getting bigger and bigger, doing the same dumb things. But yep. Anyway, so I still can't believe you haven't gotten any Zen yet. You really don't listen very well. <laughs> all right let's take a look over here i'm gonna do some i take a peek over here at uh bitcoin then i definitely want to take a look at hex you got any projects up your sleeve you want to talk about uh nothing in particular at the moment um got a few things i've been watching solana to be honest i know a lot of people are uh, running away from it right now but i was watching i would say run away go ahead and share that screen uh solana yeah i don't have it pulled up right now no, oh, I would run away from Solana. Oh my gosh, I can't believe we're really in the mess with Solana. Oh uh, yeah, I'm talking about like for the uh, short term. Yeah, I'm not messing with anything long term with it. Just so quick and out trade. You're trying to trade to get back, to regain your losses. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I, I think I've get, regained just about all my losses so far. Yeah, I yeah, know you were killing it. Got a few more grand left to make up, and then I'll be back at set even. Not too bad for bear market. Yeah. No, you were killing it on a bull market, but. When I look at Solana right now, I just see massive instability. 
And with the venture capitalists that were behind Solana and the fact that Solana had so many pr problems prior to FTX going under, not going under, well, partially going under the international, not the U.S., um, I really would be very careful with Solana. I do see what you're saying, though. It is on a little bit of an uptr uptr uptrend. So, I mean, I'm sure that somebody made out decently, but they also took a pretty serious gamble. It kind of reminds me of Luna Terra. Just start at a higher number. Yeah, because, like, the way I was looking at it, like, like the uh, VCs and stuff, um, the VCs that were going to get out, they're already out. So uh, anybody who wants to come back in and swoop up whatever is left, there's not really too many uh, big players really holding that much Solana right now. Ugh. So if uh, somebody did want to push it up really quick just to push it up, uh, it's, it's quite possible. Yeah. Well, let's see. Right now, Solana, the RSI, it was over. Yeah, I definitely wouldn't mess with it right now, though. <laughs> What's that? I said I definitely probably wouldn't mess with it right now, though. Okay. Yeah, it's definitely pulling back. Uh, ugh. It looks horrible, man. <laughs> let's look at this here real quick. Let's look over here. Let's see what that su killer support level is. Uh, $8. It can't go down to $8. That's, that's your killer level. That's when it... The, that bottom falls out. It's just going to crash. Upper support resistance. I have it at 13, around 13.48 roughly. That's the upper resistance point, which it did break there, but it fell right back underneath of it. I don't know, man. I don't like Solana, but it, the Bollinger Bands has it being overbought like crazy right now. Yeah, that's just something I'm pretty much keeping up with. I got the Helium Miner over here, and they're talking about moving over to Solana still, which I completely don't agree with, but... It's happening anyway, so I'm like, I'm like, there must be a reason behind it. Yeah. What What is, I don't really know anything about helium. What's helium all about? You're way better at researching stuff than me. Yeah, you know, helium's like a decentralized uh, network, pretty much um, ran by the people, basically, with the um, helium hotspot miners. So uh, think of 5G, like like T-Mobile with a phone service, and they have like towers and stuff like that, and the phone companies have towers. Instead of uh, having the towers, it would be ran by the uh, hotspots. And um, you just have global data coverage through all the hotspots. So as many hotspots as we can cover, the more space that the hotspots cover and the more hotspots we can get online, the uh, better the network is pretty much. Okay. Let's see what the chart looks out like real very quick. Oh, that's not helium. <laughs> yeah, because I'm... Um, they still have a thing going on with uh, T-Mobile and stuff like that in Dish, so I'm uh, just sitting back and watching because I'm um, pretty sure I don't, I don't feel like they would mess up too hard unless they're trying to find a way out. And this would probably be the easiest way out, though it's something that's already going down. After Usually. Stan Bakeman freed, I wouldn't say anything. This is Helium. HNT? Yeah. All right. Uh, let's take a look at them. See what we got here. We'll put on a, we'll put on a daily chart. Run it out there a little bit. Yeah, I haven't bought any H and T personally. I'm just uh, holding pretty much what I'm mining. How, how much have you got for mining it? Uh, not too much. I've uh, made my money back on the uh, miner, and I'm only like a few hundred dollars ahead for right now until the price goes back up on it. Uh, okay. See, it topped out at fifty-seven. It's down at a dollar sixty-four. Yeah, this is one thing I'm actually happy about though, because I with the um. With the miner, I did take my rewards. I cashed them all out at about uh, $45, and I think the top was 60 So I didn't lose out too hard, considering it's at a dollar right now. So I'm pretty pretty excited about that one. Hmm. Well, let's see what it looks like right now. Uh, has a change from previous trend, which obviously was going down. Bearish continuation, a bullish, a bullish, a long signal, a bullish, and a bullish. Uh, on the Vu Manchu chart, the B uh looks like we're entering the end of a channel on a four hour chart uh momentum's up volume is neutral cash flow is down uh choo -choo -choo. rsi is over overbought looks like it's still going up actually i'm gonna drop it down to the two hour chart two hour chart looks like it might be about to experience a little bit of a pullback because this this uh sell signal got confirmed right here so it's probably about to experience a little bit of a pullback yeah, it's like uh, when you think about like partnerships and stuff in uh, crypto, um, Helium's pulled off some uh, pretty decent stuff with uh, Dish and uh, T-Mobile and things like that. So it's uh, just something to keep an eyeball on for now.
Because I, I think if um, they do come out with the uh, Solana phones and they're using the uh, Helium network on that, um, it does come out as a success. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people may forget about the whole um, SBF thing if um, everything with his um, court stuff goes as planned and uh, he does get put away or something like that. And there's more eyeballs on um, Solana and the crypto space in general. So maybe people might feel a little bit safer, but yeah, it's definitely something to watch out for. I think he's going to go away or it, I, I can even see. His I think he pleaded not guilty. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can see his thing go very, very badly. Um, like when it was like espionage kind of deals. Uh, what was that gentleman? I don't even want to say his name on YouTube because you know how that goes. But the one involved with the um, uh, Prince Charles, the one in New York City at the oh, Federal yeah, yeah. Center. And yeah, it, it's you don't have to work at a prison or whatever to understand that. Yeah, that was questionable to say, to say the least. Um, yeah, it was uh, pretty crazy. Uh, last night I had a pull, opened my phone and the first video I saw was like a picture of him walking with like three guys guarding him and like tons of cameras and people all up. Like the press was everywhere. It's like, oh my God, it's one of those situations. <laughs> oh yeah, it's, yeah, he's, yeah. The amount of money you're talking. I mean, people kill others for $10. <laughs> yeah, I'm, saying, I'm surprised nothing's happened to him yet. I mean, uh, we got people like uh, JFK and stuff like that just getting knocked off and uh he's walking out here in public and it took tons of money from him, like mad people and nobody's tried to off him just yet that we know of oh uh, i'm def i'm sure he's in danger to some degree but people like to talk a lot and then do not yeah, yeah he'll sure. probably be fun as far as that's go but he needs to he needs bodyguards that's my question all right looks like let's see uh zing uh i hope i'm saying your name right uh zen ting i, I hope i got i have that right and I see IT. I see I. I think Zen will perform like Hex did in the next two years. I agree, IT. I think. I think uh, Dion is making a huge mistake. He he doesn't listen. I told him to get into Pulse Chain, and he barely got into it. And do you regret that decision? Uh, not yet. Nothing. Uh, nothing making it just yet. <laughs> when it I'll long in the future, though. I do regret Hex, though. I'll admit that. I regret Hex. I didn't jump in early enough. Yeah. I jumped in early enough to make a few thousand, but I, I could have made a lot more. Well, here's the problem with Hex, though. Hex is right back, though. So this is a check. If you believe that, this is the time. But it's going to be a hard sell because of Pulse Chain. If it wasn't for Pulse Chain, I would do it with confidence because the community behind Hex is awesome. Pulse Chain doesn't need anything, it's already got the community, it has people building on it. So it's not a ghost chain, you, you know what I mean? It's, it's just where is it? It's very frustrating. Yeah, drives me crazy actually. <laughs> All right, so let's see what Hex is doing. Hex right now is let's see the bottom. I have it at a the strong support level that we don't want to see it go under, which it might is at zero point zero one seven. And what I did the other day was I put it on a daily chart and. It kind of weirded me out, but it didn't stop the reality from being fact. And that is all the way here. Let me do this right. So when I changed the chart up there, it's probably not the best chart to use. But basically, this support level ran all the way back to May 2nd of uh, 2021. So we're basically, that's the beginning of the bull market. And it's pretty weird. So we're kind of we're back back to where we started. That weird you out at all? Weirds me yeah, out. a little bit. Yeah, it weirds me out. And wrote I wrote it all the way up and all the way down. Uh, yeah, that was a mistake. But oh well. But um, right now hex with the four hour chart. Let's see. All right. So we had a blood diamond fire off on January first uh with a sell signal that we had a short a short signal here a bearish continuation and then we did have a change from previous trend right here which is a bullish sign hopefully um if we look at it with the two hour chart uh yeah the two hour charts definitely looking bullish but we do have we have a change from previous a bullish continuation along a bullish continuation but then right here we have a bearish continuation 
Here we have a long uh, signal. We're riding up through the channel, but we have topped out. It'll, right now we have a, uh, a sell signal, so it looks like it's about to start going downward. And the momentum is going to go down with it. Volume is neutral. Cash flow looks good, though. Uh, RSI was overbought, but it is definitely pulling back towards the neutral territory. Uh, Hex with the VPVR chart. Let's see if we can pull this up here. Where is it? Okay. Uh, Hex with this here with the VP, the V, <laughs> the volume profiler chart. Uh, Hex right now is, well, it's actually sitting on the top. It's rubbing up against the top Bollinger Band almost. So, so yeah, it's definitely indicating it being overbought. Uh, it has a key support level for it with the, uh, the volume profiler. The key support will be at 0 0.018, which doesn't surprise me because that's where it's been bouncing around at. Uh, MACD indicator has hex as being bullish very bullish right now wow we're, we're losing viewers when we, we we cover hex that is interesting sound of the times man sound of the times <laughs> yeah, it, it's kind of hard uh because if uh, a lot of your viewers are uh hexicans and you talk about the price going down they probably don't want to listen about their bags going down well yeah but it see the problem like like with zen i'm, I'm trying not to chart out the zen because I think people's approach to Zen is based more on trading and not minting it for free because it's free. So I'm going to try to pull away from charting Zen until it starts, you know, to have real movement. But right now it doesn't really matter. And there's not one thing that I've minted with Zen as far as the price has fallen that hasn't been profitable. That I've not made very much so profitable. Not even, I'm not even talking about a little bit, like, Yeah, this is ridiculous. Like three hundred percent average. So, nice. so it's Zen. I mean, Zen is where it's at right now. But I don't want people to sleep on Hex. I mean, I'm mad at Richard Hart. I'm frustrated because he's treating people like they're stupid. In my opinion, I, I just, I just, I don't believe him at this point. I don't see how it's not completed. But uh, Hex is trying to go bullish, but I don't think it's going to. It'll probably pull right back. That's all that's been doing. Disappointing people. Oh, by the way, have you uh, heard of this here? I saw, I saw this earlier. It caught my eye. Uh, what is this? Uh, nested uh, nested Finance? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, Arbitrum. I got in from um, over there. Yeah, yeah, I got in on that one a few months ago. I like that one. I set up an account. I think you can find me on there. Are you on here? Yeah, you can follow trades and stuff like that. Let's see. Uh, I haven't really used it though. I just made the account. I've um, just been playing around with Arbitrum, trying to do everything I can to get the uh, airdrop. But I really haven't done anything on there. Did you? Did you give a name? There it is. Yeah. Oh, but you didn't create anything yet. Yeah, yeah I made it back in November. <laughs> I'm thinking about creating it just for fun and just going through my channel. Like, this is my pick. This is my pick. This is my pick. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure I got my name on there. I think you can't have the same name as other people, so I was like, I'll at least put my name down. So that way, just in case it does take off, then I got my name already saved. Yeah, I think I am going to. The fact that you, of course, That's pretty cool you ran into that. <laughs> huh? It's pretty cool you ran into that. I actually ran into this. It was on, because um, I got to get up early for work, and because I'm still in the rat race, and uh, it was on Crypto Banter. And he was like, he just, he talked about it real quick and kept going. And I was like, what's that? Wait a minute. I'm kind of curious. So I don't know. I guess I probably will. And this kind of do like videos of this is where my trades, this is where I'm at right now with my picks, you know, for the year. Yeah, and you can actually uh, earn while doing it. So I think it's a pretty cool idea. You can earn. How do you earn? Uh, you just from, um, I think it's uh, from what I can remember. Cause I haven't looked into it for a few months now. I think it's like the more engagement, the more people that you get following your trades and stuff like that. Yeah. I'm not really a trader, though. I like to invest. It still looks pretty cool, though. And I read the, uh, I, I was reading it, and I, it definitely is you, your crypto, your keys, uh, the transactions, is your money. So all the key things that I was worried about, that I was just, I, it, it should be good to go. Yeah, I think they were doing an airdrop too over there on the uh, left. I, I was looking yeah, up for that, but I didn't do anything to uh, get in for the airdrop though. Yeah. Oh, I know why we don't have a lot of viewers. Nobody's hitting the like button. I'm not saying it 50 times. Please, if you guys don't hit the like button, the, the chat won't wake up. But like you hit the like button, people just pile in. And when I say they pile in, it's kind of ridiculous. <laughs> Make sure you guys are hitting that like button. 
Hey, oh, oh, I know what the I want to talk to you about. Uh, so we talked about that. I talked about Paul's domains, which is kind of cool for Paul's chain, but everybody's just tired of waiting. Uh, but the other thing I wanted to talk to you about, I don't want to lose this. I won't lose it. Um, is Metallicus. What's going on with Metallicus? Uh, with them, uh, they got some stuff, I think, right before we got on live, actually. Um, they had a few things that they had uh, shared on Twitter. I'm uh, looking at my phone right now, see if I can pull it up. Uh, yeah, if you go to their uh, Twitter on um, Proton XPR, um, something about um, the S SEO, I think. Um, Metallicus, uh, I always spell it wrong. I, I think it was on the uh, Proton XPR page that I had uh, seen it on. That and um, uh, Irina Burke, and I think she had uh, posted something. That was uh, pretty interesting. I think it was like the first or second post they had on here. Well, uh, what page was it on? I was on the um, actual uh, Proton uh, Twitter page. Proton? All right. One, stop it. Hey, for you guys that just joined, please hit that like button. Please, please. The more likes I get, the and then they'll share it with more people. But if nobody hits likes, YouTube literally will not share the stream. So I'm begging you. <laughs> yeah, I think you can All find right. it if you go to my uh, my uh, Twitter page because I have retweeted it. So it should be up, up on my Twitter page. One of them should. Do you have your computer up? Or is this stuff still acting up? Oh, uh, no, I think, it, I think it's acting good now. It hasn't uh, lagged out just yet. I haven't tried to share anything either. Uh, why don't you just share the screen? You yeah, I think if you scroll up, it's under the uh, light area. But they just had the uh, DEX competition in, and that's a lot of that's a lot of uh, dollar volume going in, pretty much, for uh, trading. It's pretty interesting to see how much people are trading on the uh, Proton DEX. Okay. But uh, if you scroll up to the top and uh, you go to the lights on the... Uh, Top right, like right up there. Why don't you share your screen? Um, <laughs> all right, hold on. I give me two seconds here. It should work, or maybe not. Eh, maybe not. <laughs> Alrighty, yeah. So I think I think uh, this thing's working here now. So I'll see if I can go ahead and uh, share the screen. So that's pretty sharing. Uh, there it goes. Yep. Boom. There you go. Alrighty. So uh, if you guys can see, like right here. Yeah, it may not like it. It's still screwed up. Yeah, yeah, I think computer's Yeah, it's still screwed up. I guess as long as I'm not doing anything on it, it's fine. <laughs> but I, yeah. yeah, pretty much I was just saying they're starting New Year's out with um, their third party SOC compliant audit and uh, pretty much just posting that and um, just working on being uh, compliant in both the US and the EU. So it's pretty interesting that they're taking an appro approach of uh, being compliant all over before compliance is even a really big issue in the uh, crypto space. But I've just been uh, watching out for uh, projects that, that are kind of pretty much taking that approach because I really don't want to play around with too much. I don't want to go too deep into something that's uh, not really talking about being compliant and then I end up finding out I can't use it over here in the U.S. or anything like that happens. Yeah. yeah I feel like a lot of people are going to get uh, caught off guard when uh, compliance comes out depending on uh, what they're messing around with in DeFi. And that's going to get a lot of people hurt. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's hard to say. I know you're worried about it. it it's, I mean, regulation is going to come. I, I mean, how aggressive they come out the gates is, I just don't foresee them just coming out full bore. Just taking. Uh, yeah, I, I've just been like a little speculative, uh, skeptical after uh, the whole uh, Binance thing because I got really screwed over by that. I, I, I should have a decent amount of money right now, but um, based off of uh. <laughs> Uh, what happened uh, whenever uh, Binance moved to, to Binance US and uh, US users had to get rid of their accounts and uh, certain cryptos that were on the Binance platform 
back then, whenever we were actually able to use just normal Binance. Yeah, as, uh, back when I was a little bit newer into the crypto space, I had a few things like I had a theta at like 15 to 30 cents and a few tokens that I just couldn't find anywhere else at the moment. And uh, that, that pretty much screwed me up whenever uh, they had, did that switch around and it got a little bit harder to find certain projects and stuff. Didn't you lose the keys to one of those wallets? Yes, I also lost, yeah, yeah, I ended up losing the keys to one of the wallets as well. What, what was the wallet? Do you remember? And uh, one, I think one of uh, XLM, it was my uh, Stellar wallet. Pretty right. about that. <laughs> How much did you lose because you lost those keys? Uh, during the bull market, because I remember you kept Oh, uh, during the bull market, oh man. I good like, good like $5,000. Yeah. Don't lose your keys, folks. You write them down, put them somewhere yeah. safe. <laughs> Yeah, I remember yeah, you, had I you had like a screenshot, but it was half of it or something. Or was like yeah, yeah, I had the uh, screenshot. I took a screenshot, but it was only about half of it. And then the other screenshot I had was just the uh, public key or whatever. So I was like, oh, man, can't do anything with that. Yeah, that'd be a nightmare. Yeah, it happened with my uh, Solana wallet, too. But uh, thankfully, I didn't have anything in there. I pulled everything out. Have you been following Cardano at all? Cardano, uh, a little bit, not too much. Man. You still don't listen. Cardano. Yeah, I've been hearing a lot of stuff on it um, from a few guys in the Cardano community, but I haven't actually dug into it. I mean, right now, Cardano's not doing anything necessary. I'm going to share my screen back. Uh, I don't know how to do that. All right. I don't want to remove. There we go. All right, I want to put my screen back up. All right, so Cardano right now. I might be able to do it like this. There we go. All right, so we're going to go to Cardano on TradingView. Uh, charts. I'm going to spend some time on Cardano. Uh, I want to start actually discussing Cardano more just in general. Because I really think that people are doing themselves a disservice. There's been so much FUD and negative talk about Cardano. And then I don't think people really have a reason. They just repeat what they heard i guess before looking into it themselves like and then a lot of people are basing their hangups on kalana like left over from ftx for solana i mean it's pretty bad <laughs> look you're smiling because you know it's true <laughs> um, but cardano has been kind of been one of definitely i would consider it one of the more boring frustrating ones um they're very slow with their upgrades and as yeah, yeah that's interesting you said that because uh, uh I was about to actually mention that, like the uh, main reason I haven't really looked in the Cardano or messed around with it too much is because uh, it's just not very appealing to the eye. Like uh, there's other like layer ones out there that I can mess around with. They're a little bit more funner and uh, easier to use. All right, see that there's a uh, YouTuber out there that I, I look up to, like, like, like I, I watch our videos almost every day, and I've learned a lot from him, and he's awesome. But like his hang up with Cardano was that he felt that Cardano wasn't hip enough. It didn't look cool enough. Yeah, yeah, that's where I'm coming from, yeah. And then he's comparing it to, and he's much younger than me, just like you are, and he's comparing it to, like, Solana, when it's like, it just looks so cool. Like, and the, so coloring, the, the color and everything, it just, like, flashes out. Um, yeah. I guess that's the marketing aspect. But you remember that BMW you brought years back? Uh, which one? The, uh, the red one or the black one? Your girlfriend at the time yeah. And said, yeah i was like well the engines have many miles the car's old it's not going to last i was getting your case about it and oh okay like, that, was, that was a vintage though that was a vintage it was a piece of sh it was a piece of shit. <laughs> until i fixed it up yeah okay yeah. <laughs> i know you love that car but it, it was like with cardano it's like people they're not really getting under the roof they're not i'm mean, at the roof the hood they're not really thinking about the engine the trans the transmission the powertrain you know what i mean they just want to see oh yeah the car it looks cool on the outside but when you really get into it it's crap yeah and yeah yeah i've looked into cardano with a whole lot uh, input output and um just looking at all the um development stance of, of things with uh, cardano and uh, just looking at uh, things like uh usually swap i think it's called and i just been messing around with stuff like so it's like i know how to mess around with it it's yeah. just uh it's not appealing enough and um I could probably go somewhere else that's a little bit easier. But yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying. Well, like, I mean, like, here, let's just jump over here very quickly. And I've actually, I've been struggling because their ecosystem's so big. 
I've been trying to come up with a way to actually start to educate myself with their ecosystem and go, like a lot of the projects I have heard of, but a lot I have not. And I have not. That's, a, that's another thing that uh, kind of got me disinterested. There was like so much stuff in there that pretty much did the same exact thing. When I was, like, realize, oh, real, it's not like, like Solana. I didn't know which one to go with. Yeah, but each one is a different entity. It's a different company, a different dev, a different everything. So it's not like it, it's not Cardano creating this stuff. These are things being built on their platform. I mean, if you look at it that way, it's pretty powerful. That's yeah, that is true. Yeah, it shows interest. And then, did you see like uh, like I'll do this one very quickly. This is I do own some of this um, cornucopias. It's going to be a metaverse, but they're building it as a real metaverse because a lot of the stuff they call metaverses aren't real metaverses. But uh, Cornucopius, I mean, theirs is impressive. They actually did like a gameplay, like I think it was at like one of the convention kind of shows or whatever. I'm trying to see if they have any videos. Come on, you guys got to have one video. They don't. That's crazy. Anyway, uh, Corner, oh, here it is, view tutorial right there. And no, that's not what I want. <laughs> yeah, but Cornucopius is like one of the projects I really like. Cornucopius, Pavia. Uh, I'm pretty excited about Pavia. Now, I'm way more excited about Cornucopius than Pavia because Pavia, I really don't feel like I've seen it advance really. And it might be advancing behind the scenes, but as far as like right in it, it just hasn't. Uh, I'm kind of disappointed actually. But I am kind of interested uh, to check out the uh, gaming side on Cardano. I haven't really looked too far into that, surprisingly. I don't know too much about the gaming side. I just like know like the overall metaverse. Let's see if it works it that way. Because each one is like, yeah, the uh, Dex is in liquidity. Like, I'm sure you heard of Men's Swap. You probably heard of Muesli. Definitely heard of Sunday, Wing, Wing Riders, oh, the big ones. Um, I just tried the Eternal Wallet. I think this is the number one wallet on Cardano right now. Like, people really like it. Now, Lace is supposed to be huge. Um, I try to use it, but I don't think it's really ready to go yet. Yeah, I've uh, messed around with uh, Parvius, I think it is. I think that's what it's called. What, what, what did you mess around with? Parvius or Parvis? Yeah. Oh, uh, On the uh, lending and borrowing area. I messed around with that a few times, but it was uh, more so just uh, trading around on uh, KuCoin. Oh, Prairie Bus. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm familiar with that one. That's one. That's definitely one that people are waiting for. That's kind of cool. You brought that one up. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it did catch my eye when I went to the uh, website and stuff, and then that's when I started playing around with it on uh, KuCoin. I started seeing the trading volume that was coming in uh, during the bear market. I mean, the bull market. Yeah, I mean, there's just so much in here, man. And then all the different uh, tools just to get behind the scenes. Like, I like Cardano um, Insights, but there's just tons of different stats and tools. I mean, Cardano, here's the gaming right here. I mean, play around with that later. I might go over there and play and look at it a little bit deeper later on. But, uh, yeah, let's pick one. Screw it. We got time, right? uh you pick it um pick something good oh did you see that uh charles hoskinson with uh on uh with the snoop dog on the snoop dog video that shit uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i didn't like the beat that much but that shit was still tight though i liked it uh, i got the player mint uh which one uh player mint it's like the second from the top uh, uh second from the bottom Second row, uh, right, right up there in the green. You picked the most boring one. <laughs> all right, here we go. Uh, player Mint. Let's see what this is all about. Welcome to Player Mint, where your gaming experience is work with crypto. They say coming soon, so it's not out yet, or? Uh, coming soon. I like the fact that they're going to go, they got the... The VR? Yeah, yeah they got to have some kind of picture, though. I'll click it. Let's see what happens. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. I'll definitely have to come over there and uh, check some more stuff out. Yeah, I mean, there's just so much. That's probably not the best one to look at. But, I mean, there's just... I wish I could find one that was actually... Oh, oh, Drunken Dragons. Drunken Dragons. I've actually heard of that. I was going to pick, too, because I've heard of that one. Yeah, it's up there at the top. It's the second one. It's been bought up to me a couple times. I don't know why I didn't pick that one first. I don't think I've seen it at first. All right, so we're going to take a look at Drunken Dragons. 
Hey, and if anybody's interested that's watching, please hit that like button. And the site that I went to for Cardano was called Cardano Cube. It's been around for a while. It is, all you got to do is click on ecosystem. All right, Drunken Dragons. Uh, Mint Adventures. Let's see. Windows Tutorial. If it doesn't have music, we can do it. Can you hear that? No, I don't hear any music or anything. Let's see if I do this. Yeah, I definitely think she, uh, people should check out uh, GameFi a bit more. There's a lot of opportunities in there. I've made a ton of money. I've probably made uh, just about as much money as I've made off of trading just recently that I've made playing on uh, games. Play to earn games? Yeah, yeah, playing the earned games. I made a decent amount of money, especially over uh, Arbitrum with the uh, Beacon and stuff like that. I was surprised with the uh, amount of money I was actually able to get off of that with just uh, two founding characters and stuff. So. Yeah. See, I don't like this game. This game doesn't excite me. Like, I want to see, like, action. Just looks boring. <laughs> uh, but I know a lot of people play those card games, too, though. Yeah, you definitely want to get in here. Uh, if you go to, let me see, I'll show you something that's pretty cool. Matter of fact, Somi. Somi is a social network that's done by uh, uh, Crypto, Crow, Crypto Crow. You ever watch him, Jason Appleton? Uh, yeah, I think I've watched him a couple times. He told me he was uh, developing something for uh, NFT, so I went over there and I checked him out for a minute. Uh, you say he told you? No, no, no. He told me he was uh, making something with uh, NFTs. Uh, let's see here. Uh, trying to come up with something good, something useful that I do now. All right. Do you have anything on the uh, social aspect that's kind of like a uh, snip coins over on a uh, Proton blockchain? Or? Oh, okay. Uh, social. Well, I know so so me. This is Jason Appleton, one that he just came up with. Yeah, I just kind of uh, compare and contrast a bit. I registered for it, but I don't have the login, so I don't forgot it already. But he does. I don't know. I don't think it's like took in grasp yet. He's still building it. Um, the one on uh Proton that was interesting though. Yeah, yeah, it's very. Uh, they're coming out with a uh, staking actually. Uh, almost done with that, so it'll be pretty interesting to watch that roll out. What is that site called? Uh, Snipcoins.com. Snipcoins.com. Yeah. Oh, if anybody in the char chat wants me to chart out on anything or want Dion to chart out or anything on his old laptop, <laughs> you guys will get a new one eventually. Have you ordered the new one yet? Uh, not yet. I'm talking to the sister-in-law about her uh, MacBook. Okay. We might be uh, scooping that up. All right. Uh, I think you can do the dark theme and make the uh, screen dark. Let's see here. It's on the bottom, night mode. Yeah, I think it looks a lot better on that night mode. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. So, all right, talk to us about it. What is this? Because somebody actually did send me a tweet about it the other day. I want to hear you talk about it, man. You have, you have an account now. You've been using it or? Uh, no. Somebody sent me no. a tweet the other day. <laughs> I made an account. I looked at it and I said, okay, you got news feeds. I was all like, right. So, uh, I guess what we could do right here is, um, yeah, so I actually just shared that a few minutes ago. Now, as you guys can see, about seven minutes ago, um, Daniel over here, he shared this. So there's people that are actually like using this platform uh, just as much as they use Twitter. And you see there's people online with the uh, green dots on the side. So there's uh, definitely a decent amount of people that actually use the platform. So it's not like it's dead or anything like that. And um, pretty much uh, what, what I like to call it is um, engage to earn. So like E to E. So like whenever people are making these posts right here, they're actually earning the token for SNPs. And uh, they can actually tip people. As you can see there with a the little heart right there at the bottom next to the uh, comment, you can actually click that. You can actually send a tip and you can actually tip people. So if somebody posted like some nice TA or they posted a picture or something that you agree with, you can go ahead and send them a tip in like any, uh, I think there's a certain amount of tokens that you can send it in. I'm not too sure. I got to click it again. I've sent people um, tips before, but I've only sent it to them in the uh, SNP coin token. I'm pretty sure you can send it in like Doge and stuff as well. But that's, that's pretty cool. And they got the uh, NFT market. And um, also at the top, you can uh, check out the actual market itself with um, trading view and actually get a live view on that while you're actually using it. So it's pretty much like imagine you're on Twitter and uh, some crazy stuff like um, FTX goes down live and you're trying to check the charts at the same time, but you're on one phone 
and you're like, oh man, I gotta leave Twitter and then go over here and click on uh, Trading View or open up whatever uh, trading app I'm using with. No, you can actually uh, just scroll up to the top of the screen while staying on your social platform and uh, just check the price feed out live there. So it's uh, a lot easier to use. So let's see. So we're in here chilling. I'm chatting away. So I just click on market and it takes me right over to the market. Okay. Yeah, it's a very interesting platform. It's uh, very well built and put together. And I'm just excited to see where things go from here, especially as far as um, the uh, token and website itself, because i um, got a lot of uh, different, they've got different groups and stuff going on. So they've got like a little development group for uh, developers and stuff to go in and chat. Uh, you got an issue where you're just trying to learn something. Mm -hmm. and it's uh, been pretty interesting to kind of watch everybody interact on the uh, platform as a whole so far. And I've uh, just been seeing new users pop up every every day pretty much be a new face. I'll be scrolling and be like, oh, I haven't seen that person before. Let me follow them real quick. And just awesome to watch it grow and uh, just start out small and then eventually turn into something that's going to be huge, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it just, I, I, like, I don't know. Like, for me, but like social media, it takes me a while for anything to take hold. Like, even Twitter with me, it took forever for me to Twitter to finally. And when it took hold, it definitely took hold. But it is, it's just like, I, I look at this and I'm just like, okay. <laughs> I just, it's just not, but it's nothing wrong with it. The platform is clear. It's just. Yeah, I think uh, when the when a bull market comes out, I think uh, this would definitely be something to keep an eyeball on, especially uh, if the NFT market comes back up, because uh, this would just be uh, another way for um, NFT artists to actually market and um, sell their things and um, get their art out there. So I think it would definitely be uh, interesting to see how this plays out whenever uh, more people come back into the uh, crypto space and uh, start paying attention and start using things again. So definitely seeing a drop off in um, the amount of users that are in the uh, space on Twitter, uh, just everywhere in general. Yeah. You create any groups or anything? Uh, I don't have any groups that I, know, that I know of, but I am in a group actually currently. A few groups. Okay. But yeah, it's uh, just something interesting to uh, keep an eyeball on. I, I haven't personally seen anything like that. So that's why I was asking you to pull up the uh, socials on uh, Cardano. So I'm kind of interesting, uh, interested to see what they had uh, built over there. I don't think, I, other than so me, uh, that, that's the only one that I've really, I haven't looked at any of them really, honestly. Like for me, I've been folk like Metaverse and uh, I have confidence in the gaming. The social media platforms are just, leading up to the bull market, there was a bunch of them that were going to claiming to do something. And nothing really came up any of them. So I've kind of like been reluctant to put too much energy towards that. Yeah, I, I did have uh, one thing just come to mind about uh, SNP coins as well. I'm pretty sure uh, just a few days ago, I was scrolling on Twitter and um, they had posted, I think they were working on an app or something because it was a screen of like a phone and it was like an app. So it's kind of shaped like a uh, Twitter. Mm -hmm. You can uh, download it in this actual app. So I think that uh, that'd be really, really good if you can get it on the app and have that easy use. You won't have to open up your uh, Safari or anything to get access to it. I think... Um, I think this is definitely something to watch. Yeah. And yeah, they, they also got a kind of like Twitter live, like voice chats and stuff like that. So you can do that on here as well. So pretty much everything you do on Twitter, you can do on here and more at that point. I did notice that. I definitely noticed that because I saw that right there. Here, I'll hit you a like for you. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think if you, uh, you go up there and you click your name on um, Dwight up at the top, I think... Uh, for engaging, I think for liking the post, you get um, tokens too or something like that. I'm not, not too sure. You might come out and like make a post or something. I know they uh, just recently updated for mm -hmm. the um, engagement thing. I know if I pull mine up, I, um, I have some um, rewards that I need to claim, but I haven't claimed anything yet. I've just been stacking it up. Yeah. Are you pulling up on your screen? Uh, could try. <laughs> nah, don't do it. Oh, she, we're coming up on an hour anyway. Yeah, we haven't even gotten into the, uh, and into Bitcoin, really, where Bitcoin's been going on. It's actually going back up a little bit. It's turned green, turned back green from red, uh, 16850 I mean, it's not much of a move. It's only like $400 from uh, 16400 but it's a little something after trading sideways for so long. <laughs> yeah, it's actually trading in a very tight, channel in my opinion 
and it's just going it's weird almost I don't know. I'm. Do you think it's bottom jet? Oh man, it's a, it's hard to call. Um, man, this I think this could potentially be a bottom, but I'm, I'm not. I can't. I can't 100. But I, I'd say I'm about 70 percent positive that it's a bottom. Now, do you, think it's, do, you think it's a, do you think it's a local bottom? That's the next question. Yeah, 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 I'm pretty, I'm pretty positive it's a local bottom. In my own personal opinion, definitely not financial advice or anything like that. But I'm pretty positive for myself. Yeah, because it's definitely a local bottom. Like since December nineteenth, we've been trading in this little channel here, and if I actually it's longer than that, it would be we'll we'll say right here, uh, December sixteenth. Just bouncing around in here, and if I really open it up, it's actually. You could argue that from right here, you are $18,379 to $16,328. And if we've been trading in that range since November 8th, that's a long time. I mean, yeah. for going. That's a very long time. Yeah, so I definitely think we're going to be uh, seeing a big move to uh, either the upside or the downside right now. I know, I know it's really easy to say, but uh, you can't trade sideways forever yeah yeah it's, it's like really weird like literally it's just like sideways and uh, I, I have a friend that wanted to get into the market and i told her i would go ahead and get him some i'll hold it for him yada 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 but and i don't normally do that but i was just like he's like did you get get it yet and i was like no i was like well he's like, no i want in i want to get it. it was just like 300 dollars. but he's like i want in i want to see what it's about and i was just like well and I, I pulled up this chart and i was like you see this <laughs> It's just trading in this tight range. It's such a tight range. I yeah, I do, I do think that we're in for um, a, a bear market, a sizable bear market rally, because we have not seen one yet ever since um, declining back in, uh, I think, uh, April. No, that was a rally. That was a little baby rally. Uh, it wasn't anything uh, serious. Well, I guess I'm trying to compare it to the uh, stock market and uh, like the OTC market, I'm used to like, whenever there's a bear market rally, I'm used to seeing it at least nah, come up rally, see, I kind of consider, that like, we go back in time a little bit, we we'll jump this over here. And I kind of consider like, like this was the t t top point, 25,741. And that was on August 13th. And the bottom point was a uh, June 18th. So between June 18th at what is that at 17,633, it started going up to 25,741. I mean, to me, I felt that was a bear relief. I mean, a, a bear market relief right there. Now, everybody <laughs> wanted it more, they wanted to see it hit 30,000. It didn't, but it did do that. Yeah, I still think uh, we should see that uh, 25,000. I think if the whole thing with um, FTX didn't happen, we would have already seen the uh, 25K. Oh, at yeah. Least once. I think we I should, I think we should at least still try out for that, but I'm not sure if the uh, Bulls got enough strength for that right now. Yeah, FTX did a lot of damage, say the least. Lots of damage. All right, I'm getting tired. I'm hungry. <laughs> Yeah, did you, uh, you heard about the uh, whole thing with uh, Michael Saylor? No. With uh, MicroStrategy uh, offering the uh, Bitcoin solution for uh, 2023, pretty much. What's their solution? Uh, pretty much, uh, they basically uh, be building incentives for uh, marketing and uh, website security and stuff like that. You trust them? <laughs> Yeah, but just uh, reading the uh, article over here. Uh, so pretty much, uh, he'd be building stuff uh, on top of Bitcoin. So like, kind of like, okay, Bitcoin doesn't have uh, like. So for people that say Bitcoin doesn't do this, this, or this, uh, he'd pretty much be innovating and um, making more use cases for Bitcoin. So all right, Bitcoin doesn't do this. Let's make this so it does. Type okay, of thing. Bitcoin's not scalable for that, is it? Yeah, it's gonna be interesting. Okay, I mean. It is. It's gonna I mean, be with, the, with the, the Lightning Network, with the Lightning Network, Bitcoin is so much faster than it used to be. But is it scalable? For I don't think it's really built for that. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be different. It, it could be a good thing though, because 
it's got to get adva- it, it has to be at it needs to be advanced um as the technology advances as the world advances so actually it could be a good thing it can't just sit stagnant you know what i mean yeah you know they also had the uh, whole coin the whole thing with coinbase i don't know if you are looking at that either with uh, mm-hmm. coinbase in new york now what's that about uh yeah so uh, pretty much uh, coinbase uh, came to a settlement with a uh, new york state on uh for 100 million dollars and the idea stock the stock had pretty much spiked for a bit so there's like uh small small levels of uh regulatory like um trying to find a word for it like pretty much i'm uh, not tightening down regulatory wise as much as they made it sound like they're going to on uh, crypto in general and uh certain places at least yeah I was trying yeah, to so find... good to see that they were actually able to settle for something for once. Yeah, New York is yeah. I I would I would I don't want to live in New York, and I do not want to live in California. Yeah, I know. Uh, when I went up to New York, I had a uh, location on my phone, so uh, every time I would try to use certain DApps and stuff like that, I wasn't able to use it if there was like KYC and stuff like that. It's kind of a pain. <laughs> oh, this is a Clay Nation. This is where it's Snoop Dogg uh clay nation is the nft project I, you know what made me mad with these is when they launched i i was like that's really eye-catching that's kind of cool and i meant to get some and they were like really super affordable and then they just took off man when i say they took off they took off doing a bull market i mean the bull market but i think that this is a, the nft project that's going to survive through the bear market and be ready to go next time around but that's they're the ones that did the thing with um snoop dog and they're supposed to yeah, be building. It's gonna be uh, interesting to see some of that stuff uh, pan out. I know uh, some of the some music artists they actually use the uh, clay animations in the music videos and stuff like that. So I can kind of see like where they start um, kind of trying to use the NFT in the music video instead of just using just some random uh, clay animation like that. Like Snoop can use his own, make it an NFT or something like that, and throw it in the video. <laughs> Do you know who Braun and Brawny is? Uh, no. All right. I was just wondering. I had never heard of him. You know, I watched the video, of course, and all, but I had never heard of him. I was just curious. I'm getting old. I'm starting to sell my oldies. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, definitely be scary to see some of the stuff um, that's going on with Bitcoin, though, because there's still, as, as, every time there's something good that pops up, there's something bad that pops up at the same time. It's just tough. Yeah. Yeah, I'm uh, checking out the, um, I guess I got a, a notification. There was a developer that was, um, got all the Bitcoin stolen or something like that. The OG developer for uh, Bitcoin. Yeah, it's crazy that people like that, like, got all experience and uh, still getting st- stolen from, uh, I mean, I'm one of them, right? Shoot. <laughs> uh, Koba. Oh, something that was pretty easy, just reason. Koba just asks, is 1 billion Zen, uh, enough holding i wouldn't hold any i wouldn't hodl any zen i would actually mint it i would reinvest it into zen and mint it you keep minting it because i mean you could do a mint for and i would do 30 days but at least 60 days 90 days you know or me personally i max out all my zen mints but um yeah i mean how much does it cost to mint zen Jump back over here real quick to Mint Zen. Oh, it's a little high right now. The Gway is a little high. It's at $7.11. But um, it's a little high. I will wait till it's cheaper, maybe later tonight, early tomorrow morning or the weekend. But I would just start minting away, especially if we got a billion. How much, how much is high? Huh? Uh, right here, well, the Gway is at 21. Is that 746? Okay. So to mint it, it will cost you four dollars and seventy three cents, and then to claim it, that's not too bad. Yeah. Oh, you get cheaper though. You just, you watch it. I won't do anything over five usually. Really? And, yeah. I won't do anything over five. But you just keep an eye on it. Yeah, I'm gonna show you something with Zen. This may change your opinion, and you probably have not seen it. Because they usually uh, try to wait till later at night or like super early in the morning whenever you go to heaven mint stuff. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's usually what I used to do whenever uh, the uh, fees were high and I was playing a Zen run and stuff like that. Yeah. Oh, man. Where is it? I can't be Ultrasound Money. There it is. I mean, because if you go to Ultrasound Money and boom, if you look on a daily chart, Zen is pretty low for the daily chart. But if you, there's a cool tool, the first one right there. But if you go to, let me do this. But if you go to, uh, I'm to my camera. I messed my camera up. <laughs> oh, well, it's not a good. Uh, if you go to uh, seven day coin tool, that's their second highest. I'm sorry, not second. Zen torrent and then coin tool for the Zen batcher. So like. You thought, like you mentioned, um, BitBoy earlier. They they see this. Like I was on Crypto Banter. I was watching Crypto Banter early this morning, really early, like four a.m., five a.m. And he had this tool up, and he was talking. I was like, they see it every day, but nobody's talking about it really. People like you. Yeah. And you're going to be like, so is it is it is it going to be a scam? Or is it going to is it going to is what what is it is it going to last you know what i mean because even if you put it on 30 days it's number you got uniswap duh eth transfers okay open c no brainer tether then coin tool uh zen batch mentor that's that's pretty big I mean, you can't yeah, even mint a little bit today or uh, later on tonight or something like that i'll definitely try to get a little bit of something play yeah. around with it I can't. Do you recommend going for the uh, NFTs right now, or what's that? You know, what would what would be your take on uh, going for the NFTs right now? Oh, for you? Like for you? Uh, just just in general speaking, so we're not giving out like any sort of advice or anything like that. Like like if it were for you, like what, what you'd look at? Oh, I would stick with the cheapest is the ruby. So I would just come down to collector. And I would just hit collector, like go to Zen Turbo, hit collector, and then search. Um, obviously, start cheaper, work your way down. This is the cost of the NFT on OpenSea. Of course, you got to pay their transaction fee. And it's really simple, actually. I'll start where it's profitable. Okay, so 733%. So, uh, uh, supply on the uh, NFTs. Huh? They got like a certain supply of them. That's a good question. I do not know the answer. There had uh, there's definitely a certain supply. I just don't know the answer. That's a very good question though. NFT quanti quantity quantity uh, four thousand nine hundred eighty six. Okay. Total value eighteen million one hundred and twenty. Uh, four hundred eight listed. I don't know what that means. So that would be the four thousand nine hundred eighty six divided by the categories, correct? Yes. Okay. Oh, nice. Uh, that makes it even better. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm gonna jump out. I gotta get some neat. All right, man. I definitely uh, have to get back on here and um, try to do some more of this and try to work on this uh, computer setup here still. And yeah, you definitely really doing something. Yeah, yeah, we definitely. Well, we gotta pre-plan it better too. We always just jump on. Yeah, yeah. It's like last minute. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, I'm a bounce. All right, everybody. Uh, was one person left? <laughs> Make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to Retro Crypto, and check out Dion Rogers' channel. And just type in Dion Rogers; it'll come up. All right. All right. All right, Dion. Right, 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 right. Adios.